come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday. These are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Holly. Me. What do we watch tonight? Tonight we watched Backdraft. Backdraft from the year. 1991. Directed by... Ron Howard. Ron fucking Howard, Ron which no one's ever Howard. referred to him as. Um, Ron this is this our first Ron Howard movie? No. Nope. Nope. Did we do we Willow? Did, we did Willow. Yep. Um, I was not here for that. Oh. I don't. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I do not... <laughs> I, I mean, that makes sense, I guess, it, as a freak show pick for that movie. Sure, yeah. Know. I don't, I know. I don't like it. Willow. I don't no. either. No, I'm not, not a, a fan. fan. I didn't like it either. And you can you can listen to our back episode. <laughs> I was not, uh, I was that that Willow that falls into like fucking... Um, <laughs> that was uh, early days. What was yeah. the other... Was um, yeah. um, the little people in the fantasy movie with the, the fucking... Legend? Wizard of Oz. What? Legend? No, no. Because no. uh, we, we watched... Uh, we did oh, Legend, too. Uh, Ice uh, Pirate? No, um... You keep going. I'm messing up the whole show. Uh, okay. Uh, so, Ron Howard. Um, the Ron Howard. What do the you, Ron what, Howard. What do you think Howard. of when you think Ron Opie Howard? Opie Cunningham. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Happy Days right off Opie, the bat. Yeah. Wait, Opie what was... Cunningham. Wait, wait, Opie Cunningham. No, he was he was Opie Cunningham or, and Happy like, Days. Opie he was or Opie Cunningham. in in the in, yeah. That's right. I'm mixing them together. Richie Cunningham. Yeah, yeah. was Opie in, in the Andy, Andy Griffith, Griffith show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Show, yeah. So Opie just mix them together. I was like, you can't combine them. <laughs> Why not? Like, he, the, this guy has been in Hollywood since he was literally born, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 And has gone his first, on. His first role was in 1956. He was in a movie. Jesus Christ! As wow. a child. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So he's known nothing. Nothing, Nothing aside else. from the industry. Hollywood. He is mm-hmm. Hollywood born and bred. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Twilight Zone. Wasn't he in the? Wasn't he the? Wasn't he in the Twilight Zone? Uh, Probably. I think so. Wasn't I, he? I mean, we, well, well, he's been, was at one point. Wasn't yeah. he the kid who sent the people to the cornfield? You're looking at the wrong person. Yeah. I had no nothing. No, I, I don't Twilight think Zone. he was that one. I could be wrong. No, I think you're right. But okay. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ron Howard. So you don't uh, you don't instantly go for a director. You go for his roles that he played. I mean, only because I'm I'm old enough to remember him. So he made mm-hmm. an impression. It was like, oh, you know, he directed. Uh, was it Cocoon? Was that Cocoon? His first with, movie. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, no, his, that... his very first uh, movie oh, was Grand, Grand Theft, Theft Auto, Auto in 1977. Yeah, he did a lot right. of TV movies. Yeah. Um, Night Shift, I think, was like Night one Shift of his... was pre yeah, that was Cocoon. Two. Yeah. Okay, for some Splash, reason, Splash '83. Oh shit! God damn it! Cocoon '85. Yeah, Willow. Yeah, Parenthood. Far and Away, which I talk about a lot. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, we've mentioned on this Apollo show. Thir- Flung my head into the river, sorry. Yeah. Apollo 13, Ransom, Ed TV, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Ransom. Beautiful Give Mind, me back my son! Cinderella yep. Man, The Da Vinci Code, Frost Nixon, In the Heart of the Sea, Solo, blah, blah, blah. Parenthood, I think Tons. you said I said there. Parenthood, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Man's done... A shit ton Rush, of movies. You know, Rush. Yeah. Everyone loved Rush, right? <laughs> we all remember um, that gem. So, I noticed you skipped over the dilemma. I, did. I noticed you didn't land on that one. I didn't land on the that movie one. I saw briefly being filmed in Chicago, and that is my only one and only I no, didn't the one dilemma. of two times I saw TV yeah. or movies being filmed. Saw Vince Vaughn Rush drive a car the, around a corner. Racing movie, right? Rush was the racing movie <laughs> with, with Liam. With, no. Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And so, Daniel. I don't know. I don't fucking know. The guy from uh, Inglorious Past. Brule? Yep. Oh. Daniel, Daniel Brule. Thank Brule. you very much. So you, you saw part of the dilemma being filmed? Yeah. Saw, saw Vince Vaughn drive a car around a corner. That was it. <laughs> My question. Oh, in downtown Chicago. I yeah. love it. So there has been, uh, I've always op- operated under this uh, uh, assumption with Ron Howard. And I want to see if it uh, if it bears out. Ron Howard movies evaporate from your mind like the moment after you've seen. That, I literally said that right when you were upstairs, right before oh. you came downstairs. Oh I yeah, said, I was gonna say, we're like, I, are you just repeating what we, she said, or were you not yeah, here? No, was, no. Here. Colin was upstairs. We were talking off mic, and I said, if it, this was Family Feud, and I had to name five Ron Howard movies, I don't think I could do it. But you've seen it. I know Ron I've Howard seen it at least ten. Ton. I've seen at least ten, and I. But yeah, like they evaporate from my memory. I never go back to Ron Howard movies. No, you watch never. them, and you're like, "That was a good movie," and then you. Leave I mean, I the watch Apollo thirteen. And, oh. I was gonna say I've seen Apollo thirteen a few times, and yeah. we know that we, I've watched Far and Away many times. Um, I've seen A Beautiful Mind many times, oh, so yeah. I've actually revisited several of his. Okay, movies. all right, yeah. I'm proven wrong, but you had another connection to tonight's movie. Oh, did I? Did you? 
Uh, maybe. Well, I was, uh, <laughs> was going to say, I was going to start interviewing you. I was like, I have questions uh, about yeah, your dad's no. 30 years yes. as a, uh, a firefighter. This, this movie was famous in my household because my dad was a firefighter for 30 years. Does he cry every time he watches it? Um, I Every time. That makes it sound like he watches it a lot. No. Um, <laughs> that's all uh, That's all ex-firemen do <laughs> is watch Backdraft, right? Yeah, is there like a club <laughs> like ladder where he watches? Uh, yeah. Oh, actually, like in... Well, I mean, I don't know how the rest of them feel, but in my dad's eyes, um, Backdraft he didn't love it for a few reasons. I mean, I think he thinks it's a good movie, but he didn't love it for a few reasons. But Ladder 49, he likes a lot because it's a lot more realistic. Ah, uh, yeah. okay. So there you go. So, yeah, because I mean, yeah. even I was watching this going like, shouldn't they be wearing breathing apparatus? You're right. There's a like lot. two minutes into this movie, yeah. there's just so much happening that would never happen in yeah. the firefighter world. There's a lot, a lot, a lot. But this is a significant movie for the firefighter world. At the huge. end of the movie, there yeah. is a legend that comes up on the screen that says there's over a million active duty U.S. firemen today. Mm-hmm. So then you're like, oh, this is the firefighter movie. It and then is. it was sitting there going like, have there been firefighter movies prior to this? That's what I was wondering. I mean, uh, I now I remember yeah. movies about fire. I mean, obviously you remember like the Towering Inferno, yeah. right? Was Steve McQueen the fireman in that? I think so. Was he the cop? There was he a was Buster Keaton yeah. movie called The Fireman, wasn't there? Way back in the day. But the, not did he in, just run around with a bucket? I think so. And like, okay. I think the facade of a house fell down. That mm. famous thing where he's just standing there oh, and it falls down there around and falls, him. Yeah. I think that may have been one of. Was one that of like them? all about that, or was that just a scene in that movie? I, it was just a scene in that movie. Okay. I was like, I don't remember there being a whole movie about it. No, not a whole movie. Yeah, okay, but a silent movie. I don't, I don't know about know. like a lot of firefighter movies. Obviously, I think the two that everyone knows is Backdraft and Ladder 49. Yeah. You haven't like, seen Fireproof? Kirk Cameron's Fireproof? I've seen that. Oh my, okay. <laughs> well, now I, they have I, the Forest Fire I have movie. The, oh, the, yeah, the place I right. worked for uh, when I lived in LA for a couple of years, a um, uh, small post-production house, but was in charge of doing the promotion for fireproof yeah which Ooh. was everywhere everywhere that, and, and we got a few of those everywhere. christian movies after yes, that came yeah. to us it's a pr- yeah, promotion wasn't everything. there like a police version that was like a sequel like a spiritual sequel probably that was, called, <laughs> that was like a police version of that probably yeah uh, yeah no this is the highest grossing firefighter movie of oh, all time. Okay. i believe okay. it it's oh, probably yeah. the most but it, it does power, seem right? like it has that kind of i don't know it, it's like they were you know what's a, a topic for a movie firefighters you know <laughs> and so like if we're gonna do a firefighter movie this is gonna be like the, the firefighter um, movie smoke jumpers wasn't that a what they, was the one with the, the one that they were they, oh, were they like, uh, the, the firefighters who jump out of the planes to fight fires in the wild <laughs> with john <laughs> cena in that one oh, there was one that this is an earlier was angelina jolie in one yeah yeah with, uh a oh, crab had a really long title. Yeah, Smoke Jumpers might have been the one where what's his name from? Um, uh, John Cena wasn't on. Uh, not House of a Thousand Corpses, but the second one. Um, who plays the sheriff? Um, uh, yeah, what that, the fuck's his name? Oh, Jesus. that guy. He was he yep. was like a bad guy in that movie. It had um Howie Bill. Long in it, I think. Uh, no, when course, Howie Long had a movie career, yeah, at certain points doing action uh, movies and stuff. Here's a, here's one. Wasn't um. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry about two firefighters. Yes, yes. It was. Uh, does yeah. that count? Yeah, yeah. Does that count? There you go. Okay, yeah. I feel like it counts. Yeah. So the the movie's going to be well. I mean, it's uh, it's not like uh, you know, like ode to firemen. I think that's I like mean, after they they're making it. Yeah. It's a drama. I it's mean, a, for the most part, it's a drama, and it's also considered an action movie. And I mean, there's a ton of action. It's just firefighter action. Yep. And they ended up making i think a universal uh like experience right at the they did this universal was the, oh yeah this was backdraft the, the ride this was which, the first attraction based on a rated r movie it was oh, okay. it was a universal it ran for a long time and they got replaced by twister the ride which, I, which that's the one i've been I, on honestly i'm okay with because well, it's twister yeah and right twister. yeah well but the same kind of thing but, but yeah. yeah saying twister is like okay well, twister was a year later two years later it was 94 94 so the uh, idea that we're going to make, you know, a natural element, the villain mm-hmm. of the movie, right? <clears throat> kind of seems like the thread was started here. Then they're like, hey, what else can we do? This is a huge Dante's hit. Dante's Peak and Volcano. Volcanoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. Tornadoes. <laughs> Wasn't there an earthquake one, too? Well, there was an earthquake one. I mean, all of these are kind of like extensions of the 70s movies, yeah. right? Because I think the Universal Studios tour had the earthquake. They did. Uh, oh, it did. And that, that was quite yeah, fun. Before. That one was fun. <laughs> That's a I great like ride. It's still there. Yeah. Oh, 
That's nice. Yeah. I like yeah, that. Yeah. that so it's disaster one. movies, but going heavier on the drama, trying to make it a uh, like prestige movie. Mm-hmm. Time Bandits. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of those. Yeah, it was a grenade he lobbed from five minutes ago. I did, and I finally fucking moment. found it. That's the other movie I hate. As we were talking about Willow, you fucking just, Time Bandits. Okay, thank okay, God. Okay, I was like, a, what does I'm Time Bandits have to do with anything? I'm good yeah, now. Okay, okay. yeah, I just had to find it and like get it off my chest. Trip. William Forsyth <laughs> was the yeah. guy. It just yeah, came yeah, to me. Yeah. Yeah. We can't see there. Okay. Okay. All right, what else coming together? Anything else we gotta get out? Get it out before we continue on with that. What else? I'm good now. I'm good. Everyone good? Michaela, you got anything? I'm keeping up. I'm I'm clearing the room here. Yeah. Um, Yeah, this movie was written by Gregory Wyden. Oh, I know him. You do know him. You all know him because we talked about. He wrote Highlander. (laughs) And and the prophecy, which we talked about this on that episode. That was like what? And And he wrote Backdraft. Mm -hmm. And and he he wrote Backdraft Two. Backdraft Two. That's right. This movie has a sequel. Did you? Did anybody know that there was a Backdraft Two? I I did. did. Yes. Okay. Oh yeah. How can you not? There was a. Backdraft like, too. As a kid who I watched Backdraft know. quite often, uh, when they announced Backdraft 2, I was like, oh, okay. How's this going to play out? But what, Definitely not going but to what theaters. what year do you think it came out? 2019. Damn, damn it, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you're not supposed oh, to sorry, yell sorry, it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought you were asking a legit question. Is anybody apology. notable in Backdraft? Yes. William Baldwin comes William back. William Baldwin oh, well, and, that, that, Donald, and Donald, Sutherland. Donald Sutherland okay, comes Donald back. Donald Sutherland comes Billy back. Billy Baldwin yeah. in 2019 is very different than Billy Baldwin in 1990. You asked so if it was anyone notable. Yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't say he's notable the, in 2019. From this movie, he The story is of Sean, who is the kid in the Oh no! I mean, sure. Yeah. Well, I figure we can all contribute. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Sean well, is a, a fire detective in that movie, and you know everyone comes back, and there's a whole thing. Everyone, so it's the same also. story again, just the next generation. Yeah, basically. Same story. Yeah. Okay. Donald Sutherland comes back as Ronald yes. the Firebug. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um. What is so it, William, but it's it's like it's like he's a he's an investigator and he's given a new partner, but he hates doing like the partner thing. He wants to be on his own. Classic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because there's a serial arsonist. There I'm is. guessing. Okay. And uh, the serial arsonist. Sh- uh, spoiler alert. No. Oh, for backdraft two. Yeah. Spoiler. Holly, I'm going to go watch no, this later on. Right. I'm sorry. Spoiler. spoiler um, his uncle William Baldwin is now the chief of the fire department, and he is killed by the arsonist. So he has to. They have to find the. Oh, uh, team motivation. Yeah. Yep, familial I'm motivation. Go watch that scene. <laughs> um, William Baldwin mm-hmm. is in this movie. The star, well, Baldwin. co-star. He's the star. Yeah, he's okay. The star. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was going to go Kurt Russell bigger, but I okay. feel like they follow him more. Okay. So yeah. William yeah, Baldwin is our entry character into the movie. Yes. Has he always been? Oh, okay. So oh, he's not yep. the lesser <laughs> Baldwin. I think he's, Stevens Baldwin. I think Stevens is the lesser yeah, We have lesser yeah. Baldwins in this. Yeah. Who do we yeah, have? There's Alec at the yeah. top. Billy. William. And then uh, Daniel. Daniel. And then, and then Steven. Steven. Am yeah. I missing a Baldwin? I, th- I would put I th- Daniel below I Steven. I think so, but I don't know who he is. <laughs> There's another Baldwin. Oh, yeah. isn't there a Baldwin? What's the Sean Baldwin? Isn't there a... I mean, then he's the lesser yeah, Baldwin. Yeah, Baldwin is Isn't one of the guys right. from... There's one guy who's like in, Sean in Independence does not Day. Sean Baldwin right. Well, right, I'm going to look up the Baldwins then. <laughs> Doesn't sound right at all. Baldwins. He, who is he in Independence Day? The guy who shoots the Coke can off the, the ship. Wow. Okay. Well, so he's definitely the lesser Baldwin, but they had a run. Mm-hmm. Billy Baldwin, as a, a, a William is affectionately known, mm-hmm. did have. Oh, Sean's got. No, it. I was going to say there's only four Baldwin brothers. Okay, Alec, we named Daniel, them. Daniel, Billy, and Stephen. Everyone else is a cousin or something. Okay. We got them all. Okay. So he had a period in time where they were trying to make him a, like a movie thing. star. What's that movie with him and Cindy Crawford? I love that. Fair game. Yeah, they mean game. to bring that yeah. freak show. Oh, about yes. that movie. That oh movie gosh. is based. Thanks. On, on the, the novel <laughs> that Cobra is based, based on. on. <laughs> yes. It's the, it's, it's right, the opposite right, right, right. telling of Cobra. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the person I was thinking of is Adam Baldwin, but there is no relation. Adam Baldwin. No, okay, no relation. They're not, okay, 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 okay. But that is the guy who shot the cook can off the ship. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. yeah, because okay. he was on He's uh, also in uh, Firefly. Firefly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'll try to limit the outbursts. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, yeah, because William Baldwin had his had his run. Is he where, where is he now? Um, he well, he played Serena's dad on Gossip Girl. Okay, right. does that mean anything? <laughs> oh shit! Was he in? Um, 
He seems like someone that would pop up on Riverdale being someone. He does. Dead. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, does. Nicholas Winding Refn, like Amazon, ne- uh, too, too old too to die, die young. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, that's I, right. I always want to say never. Too old to die young. 2019 is basically the last year he was really doing anything because it was too old to die young. Northern Rescue. He's done. He was in the Purge, the TV show. Okay. Uh, Still working the, the though. New MacGyver. Yeah. 2019. Is he the scuzziest Baldwin? Oh, no. no. Stevens. Stevens. Yeah. 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 For sure. Like, think of Stevens from Biodome. Uh, um, yeah. uh, usual, usual suspects. suspects. Yeah. Oh, he's the scuzzy uh, yeah, ball okay. one. He's the scuzz, okay. yeah, yeah, for right. sure. This movie's set in Chicago. <laughs> it sure it is, is, Colin. Accents and all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so everybody has to act and do, yeah, their Chicago accent. Yep. Uh, yeah, is Chicago the only city with an elevated train? Oh, Probably I can't. Not. I'm no, say I'm going to no. say no. I think, doesn't DC have one? I don't know. Philly, I think, right. has one. I th- I'll yeah. I can look it up again. Okay. Uh, this well, is anyway. another outburst <laughs> if I have to look shit up, but okay. Um... Because that's how you know Chicago in the movies. It's always, yeah. this, you know, unless you're doing the French Connection chase. Yeah, if, if, anyway. if they show the L. Oh, it's Chicago. <laughs> it's yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Um, great oh, town. Great town. Great and town. Uh, they have a fire department. And uh, this is <laughs> the one. most towns <laughs> do. But why does Chicago get associated with fire department stuff so much? Like, no, there's all the Chicago City. fire TV shows, too. Oh, yeah. Like... But well, it, that's like, is that Sean Levy or somebody who's producer of that? They well, have like Chicago a, Fire, Chicago Med, yeah, and Chicago they're all from the same PD, guy, I think. PD, yeah. yeah. But uh, wasn't there another, wasn't there another firefighter show that took place in Chicago? I thought for sure, but. Uh, sh- sh- um, red, the, um, fuck, it was an NBC show as well. Uh, I'll red. think about it. Yeah. Station 13 or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there was Was something. Rescue Me was in like New York? Gr- I think so. I think so. Yeah. Uh, Grey's Anatomy, it was a Shonda show because yeah. they crossed over a bunch. Right. So yes, there was one before yeah. that. Yeah, we yeah. got canceled. But it, yeah, is it just because our city got burnt to the ground once? I mean, that's a big one. Like, I mean, we are we are the Chicago yeah, Fire. Yeah. Like we're known for the it. The soccer so. team is the Chicago Fire. Right, like, exactly. Like, so like, we we have a reputation. <laughs> yeah. A cow fucks plus up once, plus it's and it like, becomes our whole life story. Right, but also it's just like the uh, I think it's looked at as like yeah, a fireman. It's got like that Midwest hardworking blue collar mentality yeah. that it takes to be a fireman. I think goes, it's ironic. Yeah, it's more think, with Chicago I than I think most other cities. Okay, I'll say the blue collarness. Yeah. yeah, well, at least in the movies they've kind of right. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, movies are real life. Shut up. <laughs> Yeah, but like I feel, I could see New York being very firefighter. Oh yeah, I agree. It, it too. Bring out your I mean, dead, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah FDNY. Okay, that's what on my list. Okay, I there love that movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, New York's a big fire one too. <laughs> uh, you, like L.A., I guessing is not known for their, you know. Fire Isn't there an L.A. fire show though? Probably. I don't know how many cities have Probably. these fires. Oh, been I, don't on. I don't know if Dick Wolf gets his hands on it. Let's There's see. definitely an L.A. show. I don't think there is, but. This movie has a stacked cast, as you would expect, because it's a prestige nice. movie. We usually don't do these on Saturday Night Freak Show. True so we've joke. got Robert De Niro in this movie, Donald yes. Sutherland. Yes. Um, you've got Jennifer Jason Lee, mm-hmm. Scott Glenn. Mm-hmm. Did we say Kurt Russell is like the... Yeah, Kurt Russell, yeah. 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 I mean, so it's like stacked, right? With yeah. With Hollywood yeah. talent, top Rebecca tier. Rebecca DeMornay. Rebecca yes. DeMornay, yeah. Who was huge in the 90s. What is she doing now? Was she... Oh, she was sorry. in the nineties. She was huge. For yeah. she was huge in the eighties for risky business. Yeah. Was she, she was. in um? What did we watch? Oh, we watch that rocks the, the cradle. cradle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But didn't we watch a slasher movie with her in it? She was in Mother's Day recently, but, mm-hmm. but I don't recall. I think I'm thinking of someone people, else. Maybe. Um, what was the mall slasher movie we watched? She wasn't in that, was it? Eric's Revenge. Yeah. Was Phantom she in that? Of the mall? No. Okay, I'm thinking. Who was that? <laughs> Uh, what the fuck was her name? <laughs> it was a, a show of tangents. We were oh. off the rails. Yeah, okay. <laughs> off the off rails. the elevated rails. <laughs> so Backdraft um, is a movie about the Chicago Fire Department. It, it is, is primarily about two brothers. It's Morgan yeah. Fairchild. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Okay, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My fault. <laughs> All me. <laughs> Uh, written by Gregory Wyden, as we said, he was a former firefighter, and he wrote this based on um, a, a man that he worked with that was killed in a backdraft. Mm. Oh, yeah. so that gave him the idea? Yes. And so here we go. Here so we go. I guess there's yeah. there's several parallel plot lines taking place in this movie, yep. right? Mm-hmm. I don't even know if we can identify them all. There is 
the brother story. The brother right? story, which I should throw out there loosely based uh, characters on Robert and Raymond Hoff. Okay. okay. Who were actual brothers, uh, Chicago firefighters. Um, Raymond practically raised his little brother. Um, he moved in with them after their mother died. So they are loosely based on those yeah. brothers. One one became a battalion chief in the Rockford Fire Department, or Rockford, <laughs> Chicago Fire <laughs> Department, and uh, the other one became the commissioner. Was this somebody that um, Gregory Wyden knew personally, or just this was like Chicago Fire I th- lore? I think he came up with the idea of the story... Uh, or he came up with the concept of the story, and then the more he researched into the Chicago Fire Department, he found out about these brothers, and then loosely based those characters on them. Okay, yeah. so there's an animosity. Like these guys don't get along, like the whole mm-hmm. way through the movie. I guess is the thing that we're going to have to resolve by the end of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they not so much they hate each other. It's they just taking different paths yeah. in life. Well, a lot of it I th- saw as Kurt Russell's character is uh, he's the firefighter, right? Their yep. father is killed in the opening act. Also played by Kurt Russell. Russell. Played With the Kurt awesome yeah. mustache. Awesome yeah. the mustache. Dude should rock awesome. the mustache Beautiful. more often. He probably should. Yeah. It's a great mustache. Give it a try. And I'll, yeah. I'll give you that. Not a fake mustache in this movie. I can yeah. tell. Yeah. You, can, you, can, you can pinpoint a Chicago There's, mustache. I was like, this is Chicago. There's no need for no. a fake yeah. mustache. No. Yeah. No. They grow them on dad, accident. My dad had a beautiful mustache till I was 15. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but like in the winter time, right? When these mm-hmm. firefighters go out to fight these, because we are, you know, when, you, when they yeah, show up they in freeze. news reports, they've got like they giant freeze. icicles yeah. just <laughs> hanging off their face like a oh, yeah. giant frozen mm-hmm. Santa beard. I'm like, you don't have to. You could shave that, I suppose. Nah, but maybe it keeps them warm until it freezes <laughs> over. Um, so the two brothers, so their their father is uh, is killed in a mishap at mm. the beginning because we got to launch then into apparently this. Apparently, it's take your kid to work day. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, this it's... was a little uh, things were a little looser back in the whatever it was eighties seventy one seventy one. Yeah, oh, especially yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. I was surprised they didn't drag that kid up the ladder and say, "Hey, put that fire out." Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have a sip of beer, kid. While <laughs> you're doing it, yeah. yeah, you're gonna need this. It gets yeah. hot up there. Yeah. Well, the one kid, which is the uh, William Baldwin character, he goes along with dad, witnesses it, and then has his picture taken, which becomes the cover of Life magazine, yep. mm-hmm. and uh, he becomes kind of sort of uh, famous for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other brother actually becomes like a firefighter and, later in life, and so he's, uh, you know... The, the, the fireman. He understands fire and how it yes. works and all this other yeah. stuff. He is a lieutenant, damn it. A lieutenant. Because younger brother went wayward and mm-hmm. uh, into a bunch of different jobs, mm-hmm. but there's always been this calling. Are you as good as? Mm-hmm. You know, is it in your blood? Can you do it? Can you do it? Which I thought it was interesting when we were watching this that the lieutenant he's like the head of the firehouse, right? That's what they make it seem like. Mm-hmm. Where's the captain? Right. Yeah. The captain's in charge. Yeah, we don't really see a captain in their firehouse, do we? They never mention a I thought it was captain. the like, dude with the reddish hair, because he was the only other one wearing a white, a white, white dress right. shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I assume he was the captain, but he mm. really wasn't doing but his bull. job. Bull. Bull. Bull, mm. bull uh, McCaffrey. Yeah. What's yeah. his first name, actually? Oh, Steven. Steven. Steven, yeah. yeah. Steven, Steven Bull yeah. McCaffrey, right, basically runs the show. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so younger brother now graduated from the academy is going to go into the fire brigade and older brother is giving him shit the whole time. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, washed out. But I read that Man. as he because there's a scene that he has later with Rebecca de Mornay, which is his character's ex-wife or current wife. Soon to be ex-wife. Soon to be yeah. ex-wife. Where, in one way or another. It How seems you know like it's a Ron Howard movie. Yeah. Family in turmoil. <laughs> well, there's a lot of that in this movie. It's always in turmoil. for comedy or drama, they're in it's turmoil. It's always in turmoil. But was he just trying, the whole thing is basically he doesn't want his brother to get hurt. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and he'll he's mask. Just, he'll mask because you can't be vulnerable really, with yeah. your feelings. He's just said. really shit at communicating. Yeah, it's a he's got a toxic mask masculinity it. situation. Mm-hmm. Right, with other yeah. reasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's that's plot strand number that's one. That's number one. <laughs> we got to resolve that yeah, by the end of the movie. Yeah, that's number one. Okay, number two. Um, which well, it depends which way you want to yeah, go. Yeah, which one do you want? Um, to, well, there are, there's fires happening. Okay, so there's arson, which yes. brings us to an investigator. So the way that they launch into this mm-hmm. is one of those great you know scenes that happen with a, a victim, right? Mm-hmm. Who we don't know and we've never met. A guy mm-hmm. comes home and opens the door of his house it's and explodes. Yeah, it's a pretty great scene. Yep. 
Good the, sound. The, okay. I always remember the sound from this movie. Because they treat the fire in this movie like a poltergeist. They do. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, it's a ghost. I, I, okay. I love it. This was like my first time fully watching this movie all the way through, and they were definitely hinting at it being supernatural and having the ability to do things it doesn't. That's yes. how, yeah, yes. that's how they think about it. I, I personally but love that. But I felt that. like the movie was trying to tell me that was a possibility not just their belief system they, you know what i'm the, saying the way right, the movie yeah. shot and like the sound design a lot of the way that fire yeah. moves yes. yeah that makes was, it yeah. it's a monster yeah, like it's a sentient yes. thing yeah yeah. 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 Uh, yeah oh yeah. yeah that is definitely purposeful the movie is doing that well i'm not sure how i feel they're about gonna push that movie. as far but like it's a ghost they're not gonna go obviously i don't think ridiculously mm. far but mm. it De Niro is has a pretty but, ridiculous but moment that's a, no that's a great speech no, you take that no back. no because it, he's right it eats it breathes it's come on no come on. it's not it a gives, sentient thing it, it's, it's not it is it's alive michaela no this the, this movie that's how they know how to fight it this movie feels <laughs> i feel like i'm observing a cult from the outside with this movie it feels like all these people are in this fire universe Universe that I know nothing about, where apparently fire is alive and can be tamed, and you have to love it to kill it, and all these other fucking. But so, okay, so why do you hate that? I'm curious. Be- what is it? Because what, what they're is- all obsessed with it. This is their they're firefighters. Whole they should be. Are you well, obsessed with your job? Okay, but wait, wait, they're wait, firefighters. Wait, but we they are should be. only really two characters. Three characters express that. Okay, so it's not the whole universe. It's Kurt Russell. But how does I that understand hurt you? it. But then the deeper one is the investigator, right? Mm-hmm. Robert De Niro. Yeah. yeah. And then the, the, the crazy one is Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But those ones are like. I'm just saying it's a whole an universe animal. of people like that are so fire centric. <laughs> like, yeah. Because yeah. Donald Sutherland chose to make his personality about fire, too. Like, He's, all these yeah. people have chosen this fire cult to be a part of. So here's the thing when this movie came out, and, you know, I go to see it mm-hmm. and there's this whole um, subplot about Robert De Niro as the arson investigator, mm-hmm. right? Trying to solve these crimes. Mm-hmm. Has to go to a prison. Has to go. Yeah, this and- movie's a crime drama. Yeah, because you know, this this that is like yeah. a different movie. It is. I know. Right? Yeah, I as know. soon as the movie starts following Robert De Niro, it becomes a completely different movie. Yeah. Totally different. But this felt so much like, cause I think silence of the lambs had come out like yep. the year before something mm-hmm. like that. I'm like, really? I mean, I know silence of the lambs is huge, mm-hmm. but you, the, they were like, I don't know, ripping it off and homage. How many movies did that thing where we have to go talk to the guy in prison to get the, you know, information on yeah, the but we, is, but we eat that is, shit up. We do. <laughs> and it is, uh, we may be a little more, um, uh, we may be able to identify it a lot more now because they do it a lot more now. They did it. That, I mean, they that movie it kicked then. it off. Yeah. And it oh, yeah. Like, well, there's a scene, mm-hmm. and this is the, the one that I don't know if I have a problem with, but it, it's like it's the most Silence of the Lambs, mm-hmm. right? It's one of the most memorable scenes in the movie. The one with William Baldwin when he goes in to talk uh-huh. to. It's, it's the scene that like has is for, forgive my pun is burned into my memory. Why? <laughs> because I don't know. Just that's the scene that I've always remembered. Because of Donald life. Sutherland and it's, his uncontrolled glee. Well, Donald yeah. Sutherland is like he you know has like a Hannibal Lecter kind of uh, knowledge of the who the arsonist is, right? right? And he's he also doing the, the quid pro quo part of it as that's well. That's it. Mm-hmm. Be- but I don't understand why he was doing that. I don't either. Like I don't understand this character's motivation for anything. I think it's supposed to be that he's just crazy. Yeah, but I mean, he I likes- mean the Hannibal Lecter, if you do that as a Hannibal Lecter thing, Hannibal Lecter is a psychologist, and so he is interested in the who's mm-hmm. and the why's and why your brain works. But I didn't understand this character. How, he wants to know how fire affects people in, in, in different little emotional ways. How did how did watching your dad die as he was, as he quotes, like dancing yeah, with the beast, it, how did that affect you? How's that different? Like anything that, any yeah, but, thing uh, that affects people concerning fire, he wants to know why. How do you feel about it? Because he views it as a living thing, as the beast, as they call him in this movie. He's not wrong. I mean, I get I'm the not. fascination with fire, but the yeah. psychological, okay, maybe, I mean, clearly that's, I think, what they were intending, yeah. but yeah. it's like, I'm going to, like, I didn't know, write the movie or direct it. I'm just yeah. saying that's what they were going for. It yeah. felt like mm-hmm. a crib from mm-hmm. a Thomas Harris mm-hmm. story. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Could you have made the movie without the Donald Sutherland character? Completely? But, but why would you? He's so fun. Because yeah. it's a different movie. I'm watching a brother <laughs> drama for the first third of this it's movie. It's a B-line. It's a B-story it, plot in the same movie. I know, because we follow Robert De Niro like, through a doorway and watch him go on this whole journey where we don't see the brothers for quite a bit where he does this whole thing. And I'm like, wait, is this about to become like a cat and mouse like police procedural, but 
I guess, fire procedural. Like, <laughs> and it's it like, does for it, a bit. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, I guess it doesn't commit fully to. Well, no. No, I mean, yeah. I guess it's the. Yes and no. Like, the whole movie. No, because it does kind of become like an <laughs> arson investigation movie, right? Yeah, it becomes someone's intentionally killing the firefighters, and we need to figure out who. All right, so yeah. the, the And then setup, that becomes a political that, drama, that is, which is that the is, third movie. That is like the main kind of uh, uh, underlying story of this. Like, it's, But th- if that's true, then we don't get to the main story until the second act then. So the, the it setup takes, is so much I'm setup. A, wait, I'm, here's the firefighters, fine. and here's the, the you can't family just be right dynamic. in the middle of the shit right at the beginning of the movie. And sure, then you we can. Go I mean, you can. Lots of movies that do that. But again, well, they'll get to the beginning of this movie in the middle of their movie. Then know, it's there it's, no matter what. I'm just there's. I'm saying there's a whole different movie tacked onto the front of the Robert De Niro movie. <sighs> this tacked is why on, I brought it. Tacked on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so um, the connect. So I mean, I guess if if you haven't seen this movie, you're going like, wait a second. There's a so William Baldwin, <laughs> yeah. like drops out of being a firefighter. He does. He Kurt has Russell before, yes. like bullies him into it to to protect him. Yeah, right? yeah. and this is yeah. his second time because he quit the academy years before. Mm-hmm. Is the story we're told? Okay, and mm-hmm. he is then recruited to help the- Robert De Niro, the arson investigator. On this B because, plot, yeah, because he can't he, hack it. He accepts a job from the alderman to work with played Robert by, De Niro, played by J.T. Walsh. Yes, may he rest. May he rest. Um, may he rest. And that leads us to our third plot line That's that has right. to be resolved. Mm-hmm. So you know, we're mm-hmm. keeping score. We got to resolve the brothers. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, I can handle it. We have yeah. to resolve the uh, mm-hmm. who's the the killer, the arsonist. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. And um, now, and this, and this is also where we get the uh, romance plot. Yes. So we get the uh, Jennifer Jason Lee character. Mm. Clearly, they've known each other for some time. Um, I, did you did you get the impression they went to high school together? Was that it? Something. How long know. has he been gone? Six years. Six years. Six, Six years. years. Okay, and he's only and like, he's not that. Old. I was like, yeah. he's yeah. what? He's so, in yeah. his like early twenties. Yeah, <laughs> like, they had not, to have known yeah. yeah each other when so they were younger. Pre college is mm-hmm. when she knew him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sounds like sure. okay, and then okay, no one would say you're wrong. Six years. Okay. Right. So, and, she, now, so uh, right? she now works for City Hall um, for an alderman that is not firefighter friendly because he's cutting their budgets and he supports cutting their budgets. Mm-hmm. Um, so not happy with the department. It's one and, of those guys who cuts budgets and is like, why aren't you figuring out this investigation? Who's starting these fires? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. They weave that in there because at one of the firefighting scenes, like, you know, it's like, well, our backup's not coming. We're going to be, we have to John Wayne it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then there's a confrontation between Kurt Russell and the alderman in the parking lot or whatever. Mm-hmm. Where he gets to yell at him. Which the confrontation uh, is not the realistic part, but the, like the political part, that's real. That's mm-hmm. very real. Mm-hmm. There's always the budget parts real. Always Although, budget. The confrontation yeah. may not be real, but the language used feels very real. Yeah. Like the way they talk real. in this movie, I think is it feels very like feels a little more realistic. Feels feels Chicago. Yeah. Like hey, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Does that only happen here? Firefighters swear a lot. Yeah. yeah. In Boston. Mm-hmm. In New York. Okay. In New York. Probably yeah, I, think, I, think, I think probably, probably everywhere. Yeah. I, think, I think probably everywhere. Um, okay, so um, the so so he's come back into her life. Yep. And uh, so uh, and because she works for the alderman, the evil alderman. Uh, the you know there's going to be like uh, yeah he's going to be yeah because you're working for the bad guy you know whatever yeah, yeah. and uh she's or someone eventually... who's uh, just opposed to what you're doing specifically so we have to watch them flirt for a portion of the movie mm-hmm. yeah it's a dance a flirtatious dance mm, like a fire dances but there's no also fire. the other brother has a romantic subplot as well mm-hmm. yeah yes, he's, he's, he's separated yeah, not, from rebecca de Mornay. romantic subplot well yeah he is yeah. getting separated and they have a child together. They have a child. Sean. And little appar- Sean. And little she's Sean. apparently now seeing someone else in the department. I don't know if he's in the department. He's, he's, he's feels- at the chief's retirement party. Yeah, but that could be anybody. Doesn't necessarily need to be a fireman. It's probably a fireman. I don't yeah. think it's a fireman. So, it seems more like a... But no, it is, because he no, starts no, talking. No, she wouldn't do that. She wouldn't do that. The yeah, character wouldn't would. do No, he's, she wouldn't. She leaves him because... His wife, she leaves him because he's a fireman and she doesn't like the risks he takes oh, and, yeah. and the bullshit he does. does. But doesn't he start like talking shit at the party like as if he's a fireman? Not talking about the brother? I think he does. No, he's not as a fireman. I think he's, he's like, noticing he's that his brother's or something. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Mm. All right, so all of these uh, pokers are in the fire <laughs> and uh, we have to try and resolve them. 
So there are, um, I, I guess on this watch, I was surprised for it being kind of pitched. I haven't seen it since the theater and it was pitched as like, you know, an action adventure movie. Um, there are big scenes, uh, big fire scenes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not as many as I thought. Mm -hmm. And the last one is big, you know, like yeah. a big Hollywood, you know, the yeah. whole oh, yeah, big chemical, chemical flack, the, the, uh, the, the building full of the explosive barrels. Yes. Right. We love the exploding fire. barrels. Um, so that's Shooting impressive. towards the ceiling. Yeah. That was a big feature in the backdraft ride. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. I saw the, the, the commercials for that. Yes. Um, the stunt work, then and the 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 fire effects are like very impressive. I was very yeah, impressed. It feels so like a really expensive movie. The, it does. Yeah. The main cast members did a good amount of their stunts. They're actually credited as stunt people in this. Oh, thing. that's what right. I saw. They it's did, a, yeah, stunt they coordinator. Did, yep, they did so many of their own right? stunts. And then I mean, it was like the William Baldwin. Baldwin the movie. Movie. Yeah. Like, there's shots where you're just like, like well, at, that's at, William Baldwin with that big old fireball coming at yeah, him. Yeah, at one point, Scott Glenn was set on fire. Yeah. Like, they oh, do, oh, yeah, yeah, they yeah, do yeah. a lot of their own stunts. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. I believe it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember all and I remember. that's real fucking fire, folks. Oh, the whole There may be a composite shot or two maybe in there somewhere, but that is fire 100% front to back in this I think it was nominated for or best visual effects or best special effects mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. I don't think it won. It was um, sound. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm sure sound editing. Sound. Yeah. What was it? Damn it. And sound mixing and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. But it's yeah. impressive. I mean. This would have won a stunt work Oscar. Yeah. They it seems it like it, there's scenes where you're like, well, it's really him or, you know, or a stunt man is like in uh, what looks like precarious situations. There's real fire all over the place. All over. Yeah. Um, the, it seems like the actors or stunt people are in. Um, so I mean, if that's what you're paying your money for, you're you're getting it. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it was sound, sound editing, and visual effects. Nice, nominated, nominated. It didn't win, but it was nominated. Yeah. Okay, so visual effects. So yeah, the composite mm -hmm. shots. There's some like later on, but as yeah. Michaela was saying earlier, mm -hmm. it's like they do anthropomorphize the fire. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. breathes. Yes. And, but they do a lot of really cool things Reasons. to make it do that. Like, like there's scenes where the smoke comes from under a door and then it's like sucked back in. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's where I thought it was it's getting really supernatural. That was that scene where I was like, okay, this, this yeah. Like, but so it's understandable. Take a turn here. Yeah. Understandable. And I think that's what they were going for. But yeah. it looks really especially cool. when we watch so many ghost movies nowadays, where yeah. that black yeah. go, ghost yeah. mist comes yeah. out and there's yeah. like sucked yeah. back yeah. in. Mm -hmm. Like you can't help but think of those things. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, there's a lot of really great. Oh, there's a good. There's a tiny little like fire tornado. There's a fire tornado. Yeah, a little yep, one in the which hallway. Which is really cool. That looked like that was captured accidentally, and they yeah. were like, "Look at this shot that we got." <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, that's just like that. You get a wind tunnel. Yeah, yeah no, it was a fan underneath the grate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was. So they yeah. did it. Oh, no, yeah, oh, yeah, real yeah. stuff. Because you can it, do you, that. Yeah, because you can see it's over a grate. They it's a fan underneath a grate. Okay. Um, yeah. And then there's the 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 crawling fire, which they I like to the do. A lot. I love the crawling fire, but um, there's scenes when they do it on the floor, mm -hmm. and for those shots, they actually had to record it on a ceiling and, and uh, flip okay. it because fire doesn't fire goes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I remember Heat at the rising. time the only thing I can you know like I remember there was publicity for it you know mm -hmm. and uh, Ron Howard was saying like the difference that they were doing was you know between the way they photograph fire and other movies fire was you actually have to like put a bunch of light on the fire is like it's counterintuitive mm. huh. because you think that like flames that's going to white out your you know film mm. right but apparently you have to light it right huh. interesting yeah but yeah. it makes it what makes a firefighter movie difficult is the smoke uh, this yes, movie lacks smoke. smoke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it did yes. feel like there wasn't a ton. Um, the fact that any of them can see in any of these fires mm -hmm. is completely absurd. Yeah, and they also have no goggles or masks. They have no goggles. Like, like I don't know if you've ever seen a firefighter actually get dressed, but mm -hmm. there's no. there's so many layers. Mm -hmm. Like they go in with their jackets hanging open. A Kurt Russell has a jacket <laughs> over a t-shirt. Like it really, yeah, yeah, there's like I got jeans, a t-shirt, some loose boots, and a j and a yeah, jacket. Yeah, I'm going in. Granted, they are they do wear t-shirts. <laughs> I can confirm that. <laughs> but like, there's they, there's a hood, and then the helmet. Yeah, yeah. Like there's there's a hood, a mask, a helmet. Like there's in in this like they barely put a mask on. There's no hood. Yeah. It's ridiculous. My well, my dad was burned one time, well, and it was because. His um his hood was open just a smidge mm -hmm. and 
it got steam in it and he got a burn on his face. Uh, yeah. and, I was going to ask yeah. how, what, 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 uh, your dad got any good stories from being 30 years as a fireman? Tons. Yeah. Some good, like, like any close calls. And like growing, growing up, like my, our dinner conversations was like, Oh, we had a body today. And like, that's why like I'm desensitized to hearing about like sure. emergency room situations. Cause I'm just like, yeah, I've heard it. Like, <laughs> like, Oh yeah, we, we found a body hanging in like 200 or like a hundred degree heat today. And it was all disgusting. I'm like, Okay, mm-hmm. just another Tuesday. Like I he, heard the he, most disgusting things. He saved anybody? He, any close call? I'm he sure he saved, saved a lot of people. Of people. But, right? like, yeah. Anything, yeah, anything crazy? Like, I mean, he he brought normal. people back to life. Oh, damn. Yeah, right. he delivered. A goddamn hero. He brought people back to life. He delivered babies. Oh um, damn! He chased someone down before. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 But this is an interesting yeah. thing. Like this movie really was because this is before September 11th, right? Yeah. I mean, on September 11th, uh, like that's the first time I think I ever heard the term first responder, yeah. right. which grouped, you know, firefighters mm-hmm. and, right. but yeah. then firemen became national heroes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This yeah, the was kind of run into the fire when everyone's running yeah. out, mm-hmm. which is st- it's still mind blowing to me. The thing, whatever makes up a fireman, God bless them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I suppose that, yeah. Is this the the is it the ultimate ode to the fire? I mean, order? honestly, watching it tonight because I hadn't seen it in a really long time. Like it kind of reminded me of growing up with having a dad as a yeah. fireman. And I was Ooh. just like, "Fuck, this is." It, yeah, I was tearing it, up. It hits. End. I was tearing it up. It hits. <laughs> it hits. It does feel like this feels like the the fireman brotherhood. Movie. Yeah. Yeah, I got that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, and honestly, this movie actually contributed <laughs> a lot to um, giving back to the to the firefighters in Chicago, like uh, the the trucks that were used in this movie were refurbished and then mm-hmm. given back to the city because nice. they weren't active trucks. Um, and then Ron Howard actually went to Congress on, on their behalf and petitioned for them to have more money for training because hmm. all of the actors went through like a boot camp to see how their training was and they realized how little funds they actually had. And so, yeah, Ron Howard went to went to Congress to like petition for him, mm, which is pretty awesome. Him. And then like a ton of stuff was given back to the city after this movie. Good, because we tend yeah. not to give the the most important funds to the most important jobs. Firefighters, teachers, this it's shit. True. Well, it's all they're trying to keep your tax levy flat. And it's okay, like it's, but you gotta, you gotta, that's you know. not the cut to make. <laughs> yeah, it's not the cut to make. I'm sure we could find someplace else to do it. <laughs> um. So uh, William Baldwin sees his brother in a in a situation um, where Kurt Russell's character just he goes into the, you know head mm-hmm. first into yep. it mm-hmm. and then comes out with that hero that, shot that of, iconic shot yeah. where he's carrying the kid mm-hmm. in California a fire axe yeah. in California firefighter license plates that silhouette is from this movie yeah oh, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> And you know, coming through the door with the, yep. and that's where William Baldwin, I think, like gets the. Um, it's uh, like shit. You're the fireman, man. You yeah. did it. You're the hero. I got nothing on this. But you're right. That's like forty minutes into the movie yeah. when it takes this turn into the police procedural. <laughs> it's, it's true because obviously yeah. I've seen this several times, but watching, like I said, I hadn't seen it in a long time. Yeah. Watching it, I'm like, wow, we're not at Donald Sutherland yet. Like yeah. this is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and then Robert De Niro, who's introduced early on, you know, like mm-hmm. obviously he's going to be on the crime, uh, you know, uh, plot of this movie. Yeah. Then becomes like a major player yes. um, because he's a guy who's been injured by fire, but kind of loves the fire so he can kill it, right? He's the one who gives kind of the speeches love about, bit, Colin. you know, it's the animal that you have to, yeah. And there's that one scene, which I commented on when we were watching it, where he kind of demonstrates, like, after a fire is torn through this building, he goes in and <laughs> and just sprays some gasoline or something, accelerant on the floor, and then lights it up and... I was like, you have to think like it. You have to go. Like, Come on, <laughs> no. this is great. This is great mystique no. for the movie. This scene, does, but that oh, scene needed really to pay off with like, off. and look, there's the clue that tells <laughs> yeah. us how he. So the, the it's not like he's never seen fire before. Like, yeah. what is he? What is he demonstrating in this moment? Because that he doesn't this, already know. This, is, this goes to uh, uh, William Baldwin's like. He knows that his brother understand. He's his brother's a great firefighter, and this goes to ex- kind of explain like why why he can identify it, why he knows what it's going to do because he's he's seen what it can do, and uh, the fact that it's being alive to understand it, and it helps William Baldwin later on in the movie to become that fireman. I mean, you, and you hear it from Kurt Russell. It's like, look, that's, that's my brother. God damn it. Like it's, it's like he finally got to a point where he understood what was going on so that he could 
beat it. By it, it, saying it, the fire, it, you got to love it a little to kill it on these platitudes that don't actually mean anything. That's what clicked it for him. Not losing his dad, not that. his brother, not the family <laughs> legacy, not ah, any of that stuff. If you don't get it, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I just, right, I'm just fine. saying it doesn't, it doesn't add anything to the movie. It adds so much to the movie. I, I don't, for me, it doesn't. And it just, okay. like, it, it makes it's different if you're talking if you, if this is like Manhunter and you're using that kind of language to talk about another serial killer in a cat and mouse. The scene. fire is the serial killer, but it's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not a sentient thing. It doesn't have motivations. It doesn't have psychology. It's and also it's also a movie and not real life. You can't make that little leap for well, this. This is. movie's not not supernatural or fantastical. It's not. I agree. But it's bringing in those elements. But it doesn't go that far. It it by saying that that is too far for me. This okay, is a Ron okay. Howard movie. It's not a. It's not you know it's this is a firefighter drama this is not some like it's like i said it's not even a cat and mouse movie even though it tries to be at times yeah because i guess the illustration here is you got to think like it in order to because it's a tool used by a serial like the serial killer to capture it and so that leads to i guess the you know that scene when uh they're they're walking along kurt russell's like feeling along the wall and Mm -hmm. he he says something like i'm you you're sly oh yeah Yeah. i recognize that line that's from manhunter it's from Manhunter. yes yes yeah Yeah. i was like i'm good i'm glad you pointed out because i'm like i've heard that line before where's that from manhunter instead manhunter yeah (laughs) they Um, really did they're like i really love manhunter what if what if the fire was the serial killer i'm starting to believe i could do like a six degrees of manhunter separation that movie has breached so so far yeah. in ways I would not expect. I feel like it all comes back to Manhunter. And I suppose in some ways this movie also, though, mm-hmm. that's what we're saying, because oh, yeah. it, it, uh, it's it got Thomas Harris fingerprints all it over. Does. Yeah, it's revealing itself more and more. Um, the so the, the way how does the killer mm-hmm. kill his victims? Back Fire. <laughs> okay, but yeah, well, okay. He burns them. But how? How how does he burn them? So he uses a special uh chemical composition to start the fire but then leave no trace and the fire goes out. So it's it's very methodical um and they're trying to figure out the pieces, they're trying to figure out the composition and how they would come come upon this composition. Right. He, yeah. And he, he's making the fires to wait. It's like he's setting bombs. Yes. Basically. Essentially, yes. They're, they're they're tricked. They're triggered. Yeah. Yeah. yeah with that and big gulp of oxygen that just blows everything. It's a backdraft. backdraft. Yep. yep. Uh. Um, so <laughs> there's got to come from somewhere. <laughs> there's clues left behind, I guess. Like uh, you know, there's a chemical that they um, find residue at each at each scene. Mm-hmm. We're shown this chemical actually, like early on in the movie. This time around, well, you know, I was younger when I saw this mm-hmm. and, and didn't recognize it. But now, you know, movie savvy and you watch it, you're like, that scene's hanging on that for a really long time. Yep. <laughs> right. That's what I was looking for in watching this because it, it's been a, uh, a little bit, a couple years since I've seen this. But yeah, watching for those things earlier on in the movie that you didn't realize were part of it until you got uh-huh. to the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess before we get to the identity of the killer and all this, so the the, the third plot line, right? Mm-hmm. The romance culminates with uh, a sex scene on the top of a uh, wasn't a, fire. a boob in this movie. That thing said nudity right at the beginning. It was, it was, it it was, was the ass. shower scene. Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. did yeah. I miss it? Oh, was that it? The oh, the asses. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's yeah. I'm sorry. My male perspective just went straight for that, that's and right. I forgot about the man right. asses in this movie. Man that's ass. my bad. That's yeah. right. That's we my bad. The I'm Iron sorry. Eagle is in this movie too. He is. Yeah, yeah. Jason yeah. Gedrick uh, from that uh, classic '80s Top Gun alternative alternative movie. Oh, that's a classic. Um, and Aces Iron Eagle Two. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Was it Iron Eagle Three? <laughs> he showed. Uh, I think he Aces. Was, he shows up in. I think all three of them. Does One he? of them, he's just in there Blue for like a cameo. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Detour. Um, <laughs> great movie, Iron Eagle. So, I get that Jennifer Jason Lee is in this movie. She's mm-hmm. a great actress. <laughs> Underwritten part. I don't. I- I don't love yeah. her performance in this movie. I don't know. It depends on who she, who you think she's, uh, her what her character is in service of. If it's just for the William Baldwin character, does she have any agency, anything like that? I feel like that's kind of like a chronic Ron Howard problem is like the wife is always just like worrying and taking care of the kids. Yeah. He, does, she, he doesn't do. write female yeah. characters well. Yeah. yeah I think but that he's a right. He's a director. So right. I mean, he's a direct. Sorry. Yeah. 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 They may, they're, I mean, they're underwritten and not used mm-hmm. pro- I'm to their full potential, most likely probably yeah. in this. Yeah. yeah I, I don't love her performance. Performance in this, and I don't know if that's because of her, because how she's directed. But yeah, I don't yeah. love her in this. Mm. Um, 
I mean, it was a fun scene, though, that they were on the top of the, uh, the fire, fire engine engine. when they get the call and they have to, you know, the fire <laughs> yeah, engine yeah. takes off with them and on top. Of, like, like, instead of, like, lying down on the top of the, they, like, get up on their knees and keep making out. Yeah. They, they do. Yeah. I do like the shot, like, when, when everyone, all the firefighters are, are rolling into the truck and everything. It's just, like, her legs in the air trying to get her skirt back on. He's trying to get a shirt back on. Just that, <laughs> yeah. s- you know, floating shot in there. Was it's she out fun. of the movie after that scene? I'm I, sorry. I, 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 <laughs> It's uh, like you know, basically, and I, it's like you got yeah. the girl, she's yeah. out. Okay, I, I that storyline's done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, uh, sex. Oh, okay, she's gone. No, I think there's one other scene where she confronts her boss and then gives files to William Baldwin, and I think that's oh it. yeah. yeah. Okay. Sean wouldn't forget a file. Yeah. <laughs> I would not forget a file. There's some good file work on there. there Clint is, Howard's doing some good file Clint work. Clint Howard has some great files. He does because yeah. that's Cause some it looks thick, real. Yes, some thick files that have been through some shit. It and he's like, real. wait, like it was in here somewhere. Like there's there's legal paper in there. There's yep. like dog eared stuff. Like it's it's very good. realistic looking files. Yes, which they probably also got from uh, Manhunter. <laughs> yeah. I also really liked um, Robert De Niro's little pocket. With all of his pens and pencils, oh yeah, that was a really nice touch. And his paper bags, because it reminded me of my grandpa. My grandpa always had all the like pens and pencils oh. in his pocket, and I was like, oh. De Niro is like he's doing the the scenery chewing thing here, where like he's always acting with a paper bag. He's always and he's yep. always smoking. Mm-hmm. It's like he knows, he knows. Like to, you know. I love his character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really do. So, what would you like? Some lemon, was, some Chinese was, oh, was lemon, Chinese souffle, or whatever. Uh, 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 sponge cake. Would you like sponge some Chinese cake? sponge cake? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Marty. I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> he's yeah. He's got some good stuff. Well, the evidence eventually leads back to as Donald Sutherland's firebug tells us, it's a firefighter who's starting these fires. It's somebody who doesn't love the fire. Yeah, someone who knows it but doesn't the, love it. Yeah. Yep. Isn't there some crazy statistic about the number of firefighters that are also arsonists it's like I mean, crazy high maybe like, there was uh, recently. an HBO yeah. movie with Ray Liotta not too long ago I'm gonna find that one hold on where he is uh, that, I, mean, I suppose like, it's, a, it's, it's a field that draws people yeah. who are interested in fire you know I mean not all right, of them but yeah. you know those yeah, who like, are it's, it's not that it's statistically high for a lot of firefighters to be arsonists it's just most arsonists are want to firefighters. be firefighters yeah. Yeah. right yeah because they're they can be around it all the time um, but this leads them to, okay, it's a firefighter, and that leads them to Kurt Russell. Because he has the chemical on his boat. Because that was the MacGuffin yeah. we saw early yeah. on, the scene that we talked about. And so mm-hmm. it's him. And the whole time, Scott Glenn's in this movie. Yeah. He is. And the law of, like, you know, placing big actors in these roles, because yeah. you're like, what does he do? So his... His role is like he is a firefighter who knew uh, the elder McCaffrey. Yep. Yeah, he, he saved was, his life. Yeah, and then he kind of semi raised the younger McCaffrey, mm-hmm. and has been on the force with uh, the Kurt Russell one right? mm-hmm. uh, character. They say on the job. On the job. Sorry, right. <laughs> so uh, with the department. So yeah. he has been kind of like a mentor, but like mm-hmm. in the movie. They don't really give him anything to do. He's yeah, he's there just kind of a time. background character. So you know he's got to come into play at some point, right? You're not just going to be a background. But character. this is from you know you've seen too many movies, I suppose. Right, like in 1991, probably didn't think that way. I didn't, because yeah. I was young, I'm much younger. But right. now you watch, I definitely you're like, did. Well, I was it's a him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what's his motivation? Oh, no, I was shocked when they got to that point. I was like. <gasps> Were you? Yeah. Yo, yeah. 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 I, I mean, younger when I watched it. Oh, okay. again, like yeah. Holly, I was. We were just younger when we watched this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember thinking when I first saw it, I'm like, did Kurt Russell? It sure looks like he did it. But yeah. you know, like, what's his motive? And then before you have time to think that out, they're like on to the next guy mm-hmm. yeah. with the blatant like, well. They get attacked by the arsonist in one scene that didn't really make any kind of sense. Yeah, they went to confront the aldermen and they got there and the arsonist had beat them there. Yeah, because he was setting up the alderman was, to yeah, he was have the kill same fame as the rest of them yeah, so that he wouldn't... Because he knocked him out first. He'd never done that before. Usually the guy comes to the door, opens it, and it blows up. Well, he's desperate time. at this point because people are getting closer to figuring it out, Ooh. I think. And the alderman's also like, he's kind of cracking a little bit. Um, Jennifer Jason Lee finds him in his office with a report. He, I think he knows information is getting out and it's yeah. kind of getting back to everyone there's, at this There's point. instances where he lets out that he knows information that isn't public yet. Well, he knows so all he the knows. victims. Like, he right. knows all the victims yeah. personally. Yes. Which yes. means that they're working their way back to you. Yeah. You know? Right. And we're slowly getting into a point where um, 
Andrew Which 17. I thought, was, and I thought it was kind of interesting that he was pushing Robert De Niro, Robert De Niro's character to find the connection with all of them. He was pushing really hard. I'm like, why are you doing that? You're the connection. Because he wants to find the killer before the killer finds him. No, it was a very nah, personal that's, thing. I guess, I guess. Yeah, and arrest this guy before he gets me. You know, yeah. right? But once he figures it out, he's gonna be. Fuck. Exposed. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. That is kind of. Conf- I'm like, this is a weird approach. <laughs> unless they, unless he thought he was going to figure it out, like a, you know, uh, without putting all. Of, I don't know. But it turns out they are all uh, uh, CPAs that have worked on this phantom task force mm-hmm. deal to figure out where the budget should be cut in the city. Mm-hmm. Right. It also goes into who's getting contracts yeah, to build buildings. They're yeah, basically whatever. cooking the books to make the budget what they right. want it and to And giving be. their and, friends and giving government contracts. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. And so Scott yeah. Glenn as the Avenger has been killing them all. Mm. And uh, Oh, because he doesn't know. The alderman doesn't know that Scott Glenn's doing it. Right. right. Okay. He okay, just knows okay. there's a killer who yeah. is working right, right, his way right, right. back to... Yeah. So he must know... Somehow I kept thinking that he there's knew two, Scott Glenn was doing it. There's two separate shady parties. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So there's a big confrontation with Scott Glenn because, of course, you have to do this. You can't, like, go, you know, arrest him or uh, talk to him uh, before there's a giant fire yeah, that's happening. You have we to all confront have to... him on top of a building where the tar is actually bubbling yeah, beneath your face. It's on fire. Uh, and this yeah, I, I do like the, that the blah, 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 nice, as it's yeah. shooting up through the thing. This is after we. I mean, there was a scene where Tim, one of the other probies, has uh, Iron Eagle. Iron Eagle, Iron yes, Eagle, yeah. has um, because uh, he was a victim to the the trigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like you check that door for heat. That was a big trailer moment. I remember that mm-hmm. one. So he gets burned, but it's also it's leading to a lot of Kurt Russell's character as being distrusted by the rest of his crew mm-hmm. as yeah. this movie goes on. Which and again, this... he's the lieutenant. He's not the captain, <laughs> right? Yeah, you wonder who's running this shit. Like that's not how the. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, but it's not helping his cause in any of this. Uh, Kurt Russell is getting more and more lost in his life as this yeah. movie goes on. Like, again, we get to a certain point where it's like, are you, were you, are you sure you weren't a part of this? Like, I'm the, it's the only thing I am sure of at this point. But Billy Baldwin is becoming more sure of his uh, part and everything, right? Yes. Like, uh, you know, so I guess that's the trade off, right? And by the end of the movie, then he will kind of assume yep. he will be the fireman. Yes. He will be equal to his dad and equal to his brother. Yes. When we end this movie. After they take down Adcox. Scott Glenn in the giant exploding chemical, chemical factory. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, I like Kurt- how every shot within it has just those colored barrels with yeah. like, oh, that's not good. Uh, that's going to explode. Yeah, they were running through like, it just seemed like a hallway that was made of a stack. <laughs> yeah. Of a hallway of flammable, <laughs> you know, they all say flammable on them, so you're like, well. right. Like, if you walked into this factory you know, on a normal day, you'd be like, guys, what are we doing? You know, this place old, is going to go up real quick. You know, that old flammable barrel maze yeah. over yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys want to go to the barrel maze? <laughs> it is impressive. We made it fun here at the chemical factory. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's an exciting scene. Mm-hmm. It's the most exciting scene, I it's think, a, in the entire movie. It's so a great they, scene, yeah. That first big uh, uh, fire they have at the, yeah, the clothing good, factory, that I was think, a good was one a good one. Too. Is that the one where the windows exploded with fire yeah. inwards? Uh, I did. think so. I mean, it was like they yeah, show the window, the and then there's like an explosion into the building yeah. of fire, and I'm like, I don't quite understand what's happening here. Well, but that's where it comes from, yeah. I guess. I don't know fire as intimately <laughs> as some you of have, the characters yeah, in this movie. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, you know. Mm-hmm. You gotta love it a little, Colin. I don't think you do. Uh, <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah? I love fire. Okay. Yeah. Well, fire bike. <laughs> we were at a fire the other night at yeah. Holly's place. She does love fire. I do love she fire. She does love fire. I'm really good at Keep an eye on her. Them. I'm really good at setting them. This is like a <laughs> confession right here. That we're My dad right. is not right. good this at is, setting them. This is the killer standing <laughs> really? in the crowd watching the police figure it out. That's what's going on really, right now. We talked about that one day. We used to go camping when I was a kid, and I've always been really good at setting fires. But your dad uh, isn't. <laughs> my dad is not good at setting fires. No. He was at my house not that long ago, and he tried setting one, and I was like, move. I can do He's it. He's like, I just can't do it. I've had all we, this year. <laughs> we talked about the how, fire. Like, how ironic it was. That- <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Is it just like he goes to light a match and his hands start shaking? He's like, oh, I can't do it. No, he's down there trying. I was like, can't move. I can now, see, this. if I was going to write this movie, the approach I, the, the approach I would have taken was like, you, since your dad's a firefighter, you grew up to be like an arsonist because you reject yeah. what your parents want you to be, right? I, so you, that's a good angle. Let's yeah. write that movie. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let's and then write there's your cat and mouse shit because the firefighter's daughter became mm. the arsonist. I love this. Yeah. I just want to point out there was another movie starring, uh, like I said, Ray Liotta. It was called Point of Origin. Oh! 
Oh, yeah. Yes, which yes. was 2002. I believe it was an HBO specific movie about, and he's a he's an arson investigator and mm. all that stuff. And it kind of turns in s- specific ways that are similar to this movie in certain ways. I won't spoil it for anybody, but that was an interesting. I remember watching that. It was a pretty good movie too. We just watched a movie with a guy who uh, has a firefighter mask on. Oh right? yeah. Yes. And has Ooh, there been anyone you know, like? Is there a, is there a slasher? movie villain that's dressed as a firefighter. I mean, should we count that scene in Halloween ends? The closest thing we yeah. got was the minor, yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. The yeah, minor, yeah, the minor looks too similar. I feel like right, you right, yeah. you'd have to. Yeah, and he had yeah. an axe yeah. for a lot of it, didn't he? Yeah, yeah there's yeah. a lot of sim- Well, he had a pickaxe. I really thought axe, they still, were going to yeah. have an axe fight in this. Yeah, I really thought they were going to. Uh, but they're brothers, and they can't do it. And mm-hmm. She's like, ah. Uh, but yeah. again, the, I'm sure. Maybe backdraft two. I would almost. <laughs> Without having seen it, almost guarantee there might be an axe fight in <laughs> in Backdraft too. There could I'm be. Gonna, I, I might look. I might skim through that movie there and find could out. Be. I don't know. <laughs> I guess that's the movie, right? I mean, Kurt Russell's character. Uh, right. So the, we get the, the famous line: "You go, we go. You go, we go." Yep. Yeah. But yep. the end title card of this movie. Was weird. It, it was. Weird. What it's was like that sh- about? It's like there should have been more. It, yeah. It said, "Hey, it there's currently a million some firefighters active." Yeah. Or, end of yeah. end of yeah. movie. It That's just it. seemed like that was the. You know, it's like you've sat there and you've okay. watched these firefighters and do it's this. Like, thing. there's millions of people doing this. And yeah, like this yeah. is th- this is the chronicling of their heroic. I think in exports. 1991, it had a bigger impact than it would have now. I think it so. did. This movie was now, huge. I, I need a little more huge, yeah. a little more poetry in that ending. Yeah, uh, a little I, bit more of a. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I guess I guess what you're saying makes sense, Colin. But none of that is said in text. The text no. was right. just like yeah. there's this many They're firefighters. Just like, <laughs> firefighters exist. Yeah, it's like okay, yeah, just like, yeah. Oh, awesome! Right. right? They're still doing it. I, I love that. I just they should. Watch the movie. I know <laughs> they should yeah. still be doing that. I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, well. But yeah, then we we end with the the procession, the funeral procession. Well, we do. And we've lost a couple of firefighters. Yeah. A big procession. I, which is I, I all get. I thought about was the logistics of shooting yeah. the scene. I was like, holy That's shit. Thinking, there's yeah. thousands of people in this scene. Yeah. And they, so yeah. it's like I these Chicago fire. Department. Oh yeah. I have info Every Chicago about fireman that. was like brought in and just like filmed for that. Day. I have info. Oh, let's know. Um, so yes, they were all volunteers from the actual sh- uh, Chicago fire department that were, that were off, that were available to, shoot that day but then they put the invite out to surrounding areas including mm. the Rockford Fire Department mm. so there are Rockford firefighters in that scene including Represent. My, my dad made sure to remind me to tell you guys was he in it I have notes from dad okay um, was he there he, he was there. not there because he didn't give a shit um, oh, damn. <laughs> but he said you know Dan Matthews is in that scene right so, who's Dan Matthews uh, my dad's friend Dan okay <laughs> I love the no context. You know, Dan Matthews <laughs> yeah. was in that. I love these notes from your dad. Quote from my dad. Yeah, I have quotes. Can from my we? Dad. So, is there anything else we can get quotes from your dad of in future episodes? I would. Like I would to love to feature. Love to my dad that. says this. About I would this love movie. to feature that. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I've thought about like doing a podcast where it's just like reactions from my dad because they're so ridiculous. Yeah. I love it. So I want one. Is he listening to this episode right he now? He does not Hello. listen to the show. <laughs> oh, okay. He does not listen. I don't think Holly's told him. No, I played a few minutes for him once, and he was just like, "All right, I'm good." He's like, like "You're cursing a lot, yeah, and yeah, we're done." Yeah, yeah. He doesn't like when I swear. But now we're talking about backdraft. I know he might okay. listen to this one. Um, but yeah, so Chicago, Chicago uh, firefighters are in that in the procession up front, and then um, toward, the more you get toward the back is where the rest of them are because they have mm. different uniforms. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. yeah, gotcha. Oh, uniforms. they don't have like a, a um a single solitary uniform for this type of event. They'll, it seems like black and then white well, gloves. They all, and stuff. they they all have their dress blues, which is what they're wearing. Okay. But they all look different because they'll have the city on the patches. patches. The sh- yeah, they'll yeah, have yeah. Uh, the different badges and stuff. So gotcha. So right, right, they right. look slightly different. So yeah, the Chicago are up front, and then suburbs are, are in the back. Stars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I have notes from dad, but I also have, they went to boot camp for a while to train for this, like the oh, main I characters, bet. and I appreciate that they used actual hoses in this, because those hoses They're are like 50 fun. to 70 oh, pounds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so they had prop hoses, but they refused to use them. They used actual hoses. Good for them. Also, you need more than one person to operate that hose, mm. by the way. Oh, that's, yeah. That's really I can't team. imagine just mm-hmm. based on everything yeah. I've seen about a hose whipping around that's yeah. loose. So other notes from my dad. Have you ever seen a fire without smoke? Yeah, me either. They really left out finding smokeless fire for this movie. <laughs> Have you ever seen firefighters hit with steam without wearing masks? That's like 1,500 degrees. Ugh. 
I didn't realize Captain America was a firefighter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I get burned when I open the plastic on a TV dinner too right, fast. Exactly. Like, yeah. I can only imagine what they're dealing with. And then he goes on with. to correct himself. Actually, it's more like 210 degrees. But a flashover really is about 1,200 to 1,500 degrees. And Jesus. I had to Google what a flashover yeah. was because I didn't know. Um, that's when combustible materials mm. in an enclosed space ignite simultaneously. Mm. Um, and then the last thing that he had to say, because he hasn't seen this in a while. I'm surprised he had as many notes as he did. <laughs> but he also said the scene when they're driving towards the building and they see the fire and it explodes out the, the window. Mm-hmm. That triggered him because he actually saw that. Um, it, he, he remembers very specifically. He's like, it was a Sunday. It was early Sunday morning. And it was, I think he said the bridge over like 15 in Maine or something like that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But he was very triggered by that. He said that that was very real. He's seen that before. And also the barrels is very real. Really? Yeah. yeah. yeah ah. the barrels. Ha-ha. Exploding barrel Vindication is- for the barrels. <laughs> <laughs> you thought yeah. all video bullshit. game It's not bullshit. Yeah. It's real. It's there real. You. The barrels happen. So those are notes from my dad. Thank you, dad. Captain Fuca. Mm-hmm. Thank, Thank you, Captain you very Fuca. Much. Oh. He was, he was, uh, Cadet and then driver and lieutenant and captain. Did and any then, of the firefighter buddies ever refer to your mom as Mother Fuca? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. They were usually very careful what they said in front of children. Okay. So, you know. All right. Well, I guess that brings us to the conclusion of Backdraft, but we are going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of it on this rewatch. But first, we're going to invite you to uh, participate on this interactive portion of our show. We're going to read some of your mail, and to do that, we have to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Do you think he's fireproof? (laughs) Have we tried? I think think he's actually far more flammable than anything else. I don't know. I think everything that leaks out of him is very flammable. I was going to say, I I thought it was like fire retardant. Yeah, I was like, I think he's too wet. No, but see, this is why I think. Yeah, but the um, stuff that he's covered with, it's either fire retardant or it's. uh, Yeah. Yeah. But I think this is why, like, when the Universal Monsters are, like, afraid of (laughs) the the torches and everything, Mm. is because they are very flammable. That's just my thought. So I think he's very flammable. I don't think you could find a light. You know, my dad offered to let me bring all of his gear. Really? What? For his okay. show and tell on this show? Yeah. Why did you not? Because it's yeah, a, a great check for an audio us? podcast. I know. Oh, oh, fuck yeah. them. <laughs> I want to see it. Would, it would just be for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I want. He was like, do you at least want to wear my hat? I'm like, I'm... I'm what? You sh- okay, the hat you should have brought. <laughs> for the lie. whole episode. Right there in the center. <laughs> oh, yeah. You should have brought the hat. I, right. I wouldn't be mad if you brought it next time. <laughs> um, right. Well, we should uh, let the good folks uh, at home know how they can write in by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Or on X. At Saturday Freak Show. I think you got to go back to saying Twitter, Twitter because it doesn't. Or X. It, it's, yeah, I'm having a hard time. X Twitter. Twitter X. Just Twitter. Just, Twitter. Okay. just say Twitter. Um, Fuck them. By email. Saturday Freak Show Yahoo.com. Or on uh Instagram threads. <laughs> you can do that. Saturday That's fine. That's Night all you. Freak show. Um, about tonight's movie, first of all, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, wants us to know that we have inducted two actors onto the wall. Kurt the Russell? first being William Baldwin. Oh, okay. oh, okay. What else did we do with William Baldwin? You remember? No, no idea. idea. We did Flatliners. Oh. oh. And we did Virus. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he was in Virus. With Donald Sutherland. Yep. And so Donald Sutherland <laughs> is also on the Saturday yes. Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. For virus, this movie. And, and uh, Body Snatchers. Body Snatchers. Invasion oh, of the yes. Body Snatchers. So yeah. there you go, gentlemen. You're, wait. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, <laughs> wait, is Donald still with us? You're, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Still, sorry, I, President yeah. Snow. Uh, your <laughs> yes, 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 certificates yes. are <laughs> in the no mail. Yeah, but what he's going to be known for good. Oh, yeah. God, I hope not. Uh, um, oh, you know what? The, you know what the, you notice the fire dog in this movie? Yeah, the one who needed a haircut. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. You know what his name was? Donald. The Thing. The, oh, yeah. the thing. right. He's been in other movies, right? Mm-hmm. I've seen that dog in other things with that title, The Thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's very ugly. Give dog. that, mm-hmm. help that dog out. Give him a fucking yeah, he, shave. Yeah. Groom. That seems cruel. Severely. How come there's no yeah. Dalmatians? I just appreciated that mm-hmm. it was a criminal. Good movie question, with the thing. Colin. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Dalmatians Michael, are mean. Michael mm-hmm. Whitaker oh, writes in about Backdraft and says, Is this the first Clint Howard movie on the podcast? And then I like how he asked about Clint and not Ron. Right. (laughs) It's not the first Ron. And it's not the first Clint because we did 
Evil Speak? Did you do Evil Speak? No. Dog, we didn't do no, Ice Cream Man, did we? No. No. But we did The Wraith. Oh, the Wraith! Wraith! With his tall <laughs> fucking yeah. hair. I I forgot. Forgot. He was so good. Wasn't he like Rughead or something? Yeah. yeah. Something, yeah. I forgot about that. Oh, I need to rewatch The Wraith. <laughs> um, well, anyway, Blu ray, if you'd like to borrow it. <laughs> Michael continues saying, I got to admit, this one passed me by. I remember it coming out and all, but if it wasn't superheroes or animated, I didn't care. Although Backdraft was my older sister's nickname for a brief moment when during a family party, her skirt got <laughs> caught in her pantyhose. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a fart joke. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I was expecting yeah. a fart joke. Yeah. <laughs> so just she had a or draft. Or she was set on fire. fire. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Travis Legler says, this is a movie I didn't expect to see on the freak show, but it's well-made and loved movie. Personally, if I'm in the mood for a Kurt Russell film, I go for The Thing, Escape from L.A., or, of course, Captain Ron. Oh, I love Captain, Captain Ron. Ron. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, Tombstone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Captain Ron. I'm with them. <laughs> You've never watched Tombstone, so you have no opinion. I, no, I haven't finished Tombstone. That's, that's a big difference. Yeah, it's big about difference. three years of not finishing Tombstone. You're right. And no, I think they're right. If like, if like I want to watch a Kurt Russell movie. Like, this isn't the one you're just yeah. like to get the full Kurt yeah. Russellness. No, I'm yeah. watching Tombstone. <laughs> or Soldier. Tombstone. Okay. I thought about Soldier just based on his haircut. I thought about Soldier for some reason. Stargate. Okay. Uh, Travis also goes on to say, um, this was a dad movie when I was growing up, and I remember yeah, my old is. man always enjoying it. Ed Snyder writes in and says, whoa, I wasn't expecting to see this ever featured on the Saturday Night Freak Show. I love Backdraft. It holds a special place in my heart because of my family's connection to the fire department. Mm. I remember watching this with my uncle, who's also a firefighter, when it came out on VHS. I'll definitely be checking this podcast out. I always oh, feel like any firefighter watching this movie is like Neil deGrasse Tyson watching a space movie or a yeah. science fiction movie. Where just like, where it's all that's wrong. not real. Yeah. That doesn't happen. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. pretty good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, last week, we watched a movie called In a Violent Nature. Ah. Lucas Accardo mm-hmm. writes in and says, I keep hearing podcast episodes about this one, and they're all a turnoff. Too bad. I'm well, guessing, one I'm of us liked we, it. I'm guessing we were as a turnoff as well. But no, hey. the movie. He's saying the movie... Is, everybody's is that- slamming the movie. Right. Well, right. well yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. And I would. Well. I, th- I mean, well, the, well, all right. I see why what I said. And yeah. so do you see a common thread? Between but, all but I will say there was a good variety of opinions on our episode. It wasn't just I fully th- dunking. No, no. I think time. we, you know. Colin we, we recommended it. Colin so. recommended it. I think we all had bits and pieces that yeah. we really liked about right. it. But, yeah. you know. So. It's a um, complex like, movie that it's, it's a movie that's making people feel things, which yeah. I think is the whole thing. Mm-hmm. There you go. Uh, Chris Huddleston wrote in about it. Chuds. What up? And okay, so this is a little bit of a journey, but you're gonna have to oh. go with me. So he I'm says walk. Daniel Her- Daniel Stern has an autobiography out now, and he talks about a movie he was in called Honky Tonk Freeway. Everyone from the director <laughs> to the grips was on cocaine, and Stern almost died. And that's what's missing from today's horror. Give everybody a bunch of coke and bring in the most in the post meta era where we loop back around to slashers with fun kills and horny 30 year old teenagers. Yes. I, I, that's you, all I want. That is all I want. You know, I would appreciate is if someone did this, like, all right, this is going to be our cocaine movie. Yeah. And the only people and like, if you're going to come onto this movie in this set, this is what we're going to do. And we're not going to be meta or self-referential. No, we're just going to be fueled straight. by cocaine. Yeah. yeah. And I want you to be a part of that. Be gonna, in my movie. And we're going to go wherever the coke takes us. Yes. So like, and I want to yeah. see that movie. Yeah. More cocaine. Yes. Yes. More cocaine. <laughs> or for at least, not, like, don't hurt yourselves, but yeah. more cocaine. Yeah. Uh, the week before, we watched a movie called The Lawnmower Man. About oh. that, uh, Chili Morrison wrote in about one Chili. of the photos that we posted, which was Jeff Fahey's big golden head floating <laughs> over yeah. uh, the cops or whatever. And he says, it looks like Dot from Spaceballs. Remember it does look like Dot, Dot from, from Spaceballs. Spaceballs. Yeah. Uh, Dyron Rises says, Jenny Wright should have been a bigger star. I love her in Near Dark, I Madman, and that one Anthony Michael mm. Hall movie, Out of Bounds. Right. I, I, yeah, yeah, I like forgot her. how much I liked her. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like her too. R.J. Skarenki says, I love this movie, and I would watch this and Virtuosity as a double feature. There you go. It's a good one. We established they were both directed by Brett Leonard. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, The week before, we watched a movie called Howling 2. Bill Hader (laughs) says that uh, Marsha Hunt... Uh, we didn't. We failed to mention this, but Marsha Hunt, who was the Los Angeles chapter recruit into the werewolf 
cult, mm-hmm. uh, also appeared with Christopher Lee in Dracula AD 1972, yes. another freak show classic, which yes. we did an episode that on that. Was, that was the Alucard one, right? Where he yeah. wrote it yeah, out and yeah. connected yep. the lines. Oh, I must draw this out. <laughs> and, Such a uh, complex right. cypher. Yeah. <laughs> Alucard. Know, and Bill also realized that Vlad, which was the Transylvanian, uh, it, this is the threesome, right? <laughs> the it threesome, was yeah. Marsha Hunt and Vlad uh, and Sybil yeah. Danning. Uh, uh, Vlad is Mickey from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Wow. Yes. Wow. Right. yes he is. That's what it, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Dem Twisted Animation says Howling is a fan favorite, is one of the best werewolf movies of all time. So it was a disappointment <laughs> that Howling 2, Your Sister is a Werewolf, followed that. Unfortunately, I've never seen the rest of the sequels since they were never readily available back in the day, as well as people saying how bad they are. But the way you briefly describe the rest of the sequels, they actually sound entertaining. Michaela, uh, any update on that? And all, yeah. Um, Michaela was going to undertake <laughs> this project. We, we just watched the second one, and my husband is reeling from that experience. Oh, did you make him watch it? Yeah, well, we watched it. We started from the beginning, so we're watching the first one, the second one. I've oh, never, okay. I was okay. never called that movie a week. disappointment. That's yeah. I, no. he, he How just, could he be like, disappointed? I what was he disappointed? I showed, no, he no, he. I didn't say he was disappointed. That was oh. the writer that said. Oh, yeah, gotcha. No, yeah, I'm sorry. He's just. It's a lot to take in. He's still <laughs> it absorbing. Is, it is a lot. I think to he's process. still processing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he is excited for the third one because that has the kangaroo. Yep. The marsupials. marsupials. Yeah, 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 with pouches yes. and everything. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. interested in that one. Yeah. Yeah. Give, give us a full rundown when you get through that one. <laughs> she may bring it to the yeah, freak show. We'll Who knows? Oh, no. All right. Well, thank you all for writing in. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. Now we're going to go around the table and review tonight's movie, Backdraft, starting with Colin. What do you think about Backdraft? I mean, it's a good movie. You know, it. Uh, it's different than a lot of the stuff that we do on the show where you're trying to determine if a bad movie is actually good enough to watch or not. I mean, this one's a good movie. It's uh, got, I mean, obviously I think Holly is picking it because it's timed with Father's Day. I think this episode is coming out. Uh, it's a very like uh, it's Fathers a, it's a manly movie, you know, with the brotherhood and heroism and, you know, um, it registers like that. It's um. I don't know. I mean, what can you say about it? The effects were good. The, it's never been a favorite of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, I think just because it, it's overloaded uh, with the the drama. The, there's character um, uh, plot threads that kind of seem overwrought. They just. I mean, it's very melodramatic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and and like I didn't the- get enough of the you know fire action maybe i did i okay i'm gonna say i did it was just it was was way too long uh you know it's like two hours and 20 minutes too long Mm -hmm. um but i mean it's well executed it's got good people in it they're doing good work uh you know it it was compelling (laughs) so if you haven't seen backdraft you should see backdraft it's uh, the firefighter movie Uh, is there would you put Ladder 49 above this? I haven't seen Ladder 49, so this is the it, firefighter I've movie. I've only seen it once, and I've seen this one many times, so this would be my firefighter yep. movie. All right, so Backdraft is the firefighter movie. Michaela, what'd you think? Yeah, I agree with a lot of what you said, Colin. Like, I mean, Ron Howard might make kind of dull movies, but they're always well done, well executed, well directed. Well, like, everything is very polished and well done. Like Solo. I mean, I like it Solo. It may not be exciting, but yeah, it's, well it's that's done. what I was saying. It's usually dull, but it's well right, done. Right, yeah, you know, um, and like especially in his later years, he's really gotten sleepy old man status and later stuff, which is just a bummer. But like, because I mean, like you could say Frost Nixon is not like an exciting source material, but he makes that movie kind of exciting. Like that mm-hmm. movie has some momentum. I yeah, I don't. I didn't watch this growing up. This is like my first time watching it, like all the way through. I mean, you're always glad to see Kurt Russell. Anytime you get to watch Kurt Russell, it's a treat. Yeah, it's um, never truth. bad. Yeah, you know, and I don't know if you guys have seen like Goldie Hawn's posts about him on Instagram, but they're always the it's, cutest thing it's ever. It's the cutest thing They ever. are just like your boomer grandparents Oh no, posting. they're goals. Yeah, but like yeah. they don't post like famous people. They post like your grandparents. Yeah, like it's like so dancing cute. in ways you wouldn't want anybody yes. to see and like, shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like every standing year for next his, to a sign. Yes. Like it's so cute. <laughs> every year for his birthday, they go out to eat and she records him and is like, honey, what day is it? And he's like, it's my birthday. <laughs> he's like, what are we doing? He's like, we're going to go eat at my favorite restaurant. And like they're standing outside there. He's she's making him stand under the sign of like the restaurant to yeah, film this. And then that's so it. That's, that's the post. Oh, like, uh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, so they're very wholesome. It's like they've never had a camera. Yeah. Like it's so cute. And like 
like they don't know they're famous. Yeah, because it's no the idea. most there just like yeah. raw, yeah. like normal family shit. It's adorable. It's uh, home movies. Yeah, it's it so really cute. is so cute. Um, but yeah, I I don't have any connection to firefighters or anything like that. I don't have a nostalgic connection to this movie, so I don't think I can recommend it just because I thought it was too long and I was kind of bored with it. But I understand why people like it and why they might have watched it a lot as a kid. It's just this is not something I can access. Uh, and that's fine. If you like it, it's fine. It's not a bad movie by any stretch. I don't think Ron Howard, like even his worst movie is still like a, probably a pretty passable movie. You know, it's oh, just probably. probably boring is probably its biggest crime. You know, like he doesn't make incompetent movies. And I do like how much time he spends with characters and lets you get to know the characters and the relationships to each other. I, his characters always feel very human and like well-developed except for like the wives usually but um i and he does get good like emotional moments but yeah it's just this one i, I can't connect with so i'm gonna pass on it sean i agree with a lot of what michaela said and colin said um i think i'm i'm, I'm gonna recommend it um i mean i've wa- i watch this movie a lot there is that there is a, a very big nostalgic factor for the for me for this one i watch this with my mom a lot my mom's a big kurt russell fan just kind of a big like uh, uh, the action adventure parts of this stuff, and she loves the the drama and the romantic stuff and all that. Um, so I watch this movie a lot. Uh, I still find it uh, again; it is too long. It shouldn't be two hours and seventeen minutes. There's obvious stuff I think we could cut in this movie, but it is like this. I think there's still a lot to like about this movie. Again, a stacked cast. I think they're all doing really good work. Um, uh, the stunts, the pyrotechnics, and all that stuff. I I have a lot of respect for this movie because that shit's all real and happening on screen. And I can't, you can't just dismiss that or I won't dismiss that. So I appreciate, um, a lot of the crafting in this movie. I'm sure a lot of, um, you know, the input from, you know, real firefighters that went into all this stuff, um, everything the actors did to kind of pull this whole thing off. Um, yeah, I still think it's a good movie. Again, it has its faults like we've said, but yeah, I'll still recommend backdraft. That's, uh, yeah, that's still a good movie. Yeah, I recommend. Holly, yeah. take us home. Yeah, so I brought this movie because I think if it wasn't directed by Ron Howard, if it was the same movie mm. but directed by someone else, people would notice how crazy a lot of it is. Like, it's... Michaela, you're not wrong. Ron they Howard make, grounds it. They make the fire supernatural. Mm-hmm. Like, that is an element of this movie. You know, you can you can dress it up all you want and say like, Oh, they don't actually go there. They do though. Mm -hmm. Like they make it seem like it is a living thing that it's, it's a monster. They make it seem like this is a monster movie and it's got, it's got crazy melodrama, but it's also like a police procedural and like, all of the elements woven into this movie. I'm like, if it wasn't Ron Howard, we would think this is nuts. Mm -hmm. Like, I think the fact that it's a packed cast and there's Ron Howard, pulls it together like oh yeah you know it's it's good we like seeing all these people it's because well it's done. so a-list we're, we're not it's noticing so A-list, <laughs> i think we're blind to it because i'm like this is a really kind of unhinged movie like donald <laughs> sutherland is batshit crazy i love it i'm here for it the 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 did the fire talk to you? Like it's, it's <laughs> right. Bananas. Did it look you in the eyes. It's bananas. <laughs> he I, does. <laughs> I really do think that we've got blinders on because it's Ron Howard, but I think it's kind of crazy. But I do think that. I, I am I'm kind of obsessed with the real effects of this movie. We do not get that anymore, mm. and it is spectacular. Um, there's so many things wrong happening in this movie. <laughs> like it's 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 not realistic. That there's no way cadets would be partying in a bar in their uniforms and letting girls wear their boots. That's not a thing that would ever happen. You'd instantly be kicked off the force. But anyway, <laughs> it's just, no. They they had to go home and change out of their uniform before they went anywhere. Just putting that out there. But thank you, Dad. Yeah, thank you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I think this movie is crazier than people remember it is. It's it, it's it's kind of nuts. I I love that about it. I mean, I did grow up with it. Obviously, I do have a strong connection to it. So I know that might feed into it. But I do think that the elements of it are actually just crazy, and I think. Yeah, I don't know. I think th- there's a weird Ron Howard lens like that's put over it that is like, well, it's a good movie. Yeah, it is, but it's kind of crazy. 
But yeah, I like if, it. if Ron Howard hadn't directed Splash, I would think Mermaids Coming to Life. That's just crazy. Exactly. It's just crazy. Exactly. For <laughs> Ron Howard. But Ron Howard made that yeah. believable. Cocoon. Same. Cocoon. Same. Old people. Aliens. Come on. <laughs> Same. Ridiculous. Yep. I agree. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to recommend it. I enjoy it. It's really stupid in some parts, but I think it's a. I think it's entertaining. It is way too long. I agree with that. Mm. But I'm going to recommend it. All right, so it's backdraft on Saturday Night Freak Show. Next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Kayla. what are we going to watch next week? Fire movie part two? No, no, okay, okay. no. Uh, I got a, I mean, I got a slasher itch to scratch now after mm-hmm. In a Violent Nature, so we're going to watch Happy Birthday to Me. Oh, oh good. Okay. Hey, it's 1981. Finally, <laughs> I, I can put that poster in my head to rest. Yeah, same. I've seen yeah. the famous no, poster. Uh, have I've you not seen, seen this? No. Okay, neither have I. I've seen it come up on slasher lists all the time. The last time I did this, it was curtains, and it was not good, so... But we we'll uh, we okay, but we got a lot out of curtains. We got yeah, I mean, we wrung curtains dry, yeah. I think. And, we got everything we could get out of it. Quick so question, why are you picking it? It's uh, my birthday week. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so all right. So where you didn't pick birthday girl for yeah, Nicole Kidman, I, I almost, you are going yeah, into it going I, I, like all right, I almost, it's gotta be a birthday. I almost picked birthday girl, but it's too close, too close to yeah. uh to die for. Yeah, it's too yeah. close. Yeah. So. Right. But birthday themed very well. Yeah. So happy Love birthday well. to me. The yeah. classic 80s slasher. Is it? We'll find out. Next week on well, next week yeah. on Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us for that. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.